All right, thank you so much for waiting, friends. Uh, it's a very important discussion today. We are honored to have with us uh, Gurinder Singh Man from Leicester, and we'll be starting the talk show just in a few minutes. And in the meantime, while we are getting ready, I would request uh, all of our friends who have already joined, if they can please share this on their timeline, it's gonna really help us to spread the word to other people so that the message can reach as many people as possible. So, today we program starting the program. Uh, Gurinder Singh Maan, Dr. Maan, who is Lester England, author of this wonderful book, The British and the Six. A very interesting book, which has been made in the past two weeks, in the world, in the world, in the world, and in the world, and in the world, and in the world, and in the world, which has been made in the past two weeks, which has been made in the past two weeks. So, Dr. Maan, Dr. Maan, Dr. Maan, Dr. Maan, Meantime, I would request everyone to please share it on your timeline. Uh, share the uh, the video in your different groups, especially if you can do it on WhatsApp groups also, that's going to be a big help. Uh, let me also share on my timeline in the meantime. Uh, and please uh, give me a minute and we will be back just most probably in one minute with Gurinder Singh Maan, all the way from Leicester. Gurinder Singh Maan Ji, the initiative has a Sikh museum. This is, this is the main uh, thing that we're going to talk about today, which is the future of Sikh museum, Sikh heritage. We have a lot of people who have a lot of people who But the question is, what can we do about these things? So this is what Today's program is going to give us some good clues with which we can save these things, which we can preserve these things for eternity. Hamesha de lay digital technology in all, HG Jadia preserve Hosagdia. I'm going to go to Lester now to see if Dr. Man is done with his sharing, and then I will join with him. In the meantime, I'll just tell you a little bit more about him. He holds a MA in South Asia religions. From the De Montfort University, Leicester. He has written three books so far. One is on Sri Dasan Granth, Questions and Answers. Another is Granth of Guru Gobind Singh, Essays, Lecture and Translations. And this is the third book with which we're gonna, uh, about which we're going to talk today. And also, this is his initiative, as I was telling earlier, about Sikh Museum, which is to research the numerous Sikh relics and artifacts in the UK. And he curated the exhibition Anglo Sikh Wars, Battles, Treaties, and Relics. And uh, he's a digital curator, of course, of the Anglo Sikh Virtual Museum. It's a virtual museum that we'll be talking today. So let me welcome Dr. Man to the studio. Hello, Dr. Man. Sasrika. Apna microphone on, Kalladar sir. Sasrika ji, kida thik thak? Both of you. Thank you so much, Dr. Sir. It's really a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much for having me this evening and both um, Tanbaag Sahih Jine views Jine Hagia from all around the world as well. So, Sasikaji to everybody out there. Doctor, are you able to, were you able to share it with your friends while I was? Yes, yes okay. it's on the museum and then we can share later on as well. Yes. Perfect. So, we'll get started with our talk today without taking too much time. Uh, Doc, first of all, I would like to congratulate you for this wonderful book. You know, this is amazing. Like, you know, just in the last two weeks, especially though of Tanevichi, Everybody is discussing about this book, and we can't wait to have our hands on this wonderful book, The British and the Six. So, heartiest congratulations to you. Thank you, Jeep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, let's get to this book first. You know, this is the book that we're going to discuss first in our few minutes. This book is the book that we're going to discuss first in our few minutes. First, in our few minutes today in the beginning. So, tell us a little bit more. Uh, about this particular book and you know, especially the cover here, like this cover looks so like, you know, interesting. Like what are we trying to depict in this particular cover that we are seeing on the screen right now? So uh, basically, coffee did the interest did the Sikh history and heritage was there. I want to the approach the subject did that from a different vantage point. So though Sikh history, they do that. A very did the very similar on the Jodo Koikatav Lekta, Kataba, we very, very similar in nature on the Jodo research Koika, the Ovi did the similar in nature on the but Mera background did I got the field work which I got the manuscripts which we had got the 
ਔਰ ਆਰਕਾਈਵਸ ਜਾ ਕੇ ਵੀ ਹੈਗਾ ਆ ਪਰ ਵਾਟ ਆ ਵਾਂਟ ਟੂ ਡੂ ਪ੍ਰਾਈਮਰਲੀ ਗਿਟ ਆ ਕਵਰ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਡਿਪੈਕਟ ਕਰਨਾ ਸੀਗਾ ਜਦੋਂ ਆਪਾਂ ਬ੍ਰਿਟਿਸ਼ ਅੰਦਰ ਸਿੱਖਸ ਆਪਾਂ ਦੇਖਦੇ ਆ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਹੁਣ ਆਪਾਂ ਯੂਕੇ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਰਹਿੰਦੇ ਆ ਜਨਰਲੀ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਗੋਰੇ ਇੱਥੇ ਰਹਿੰਦੇ ਆ ਦੇ ਨੋਰਮਲੀ ਜਿੱਦਾਂ ਇਕਵਾਈਟ the british and the sikhs from the time period of world war 1 ya world war 2 jidda hunda ya ji so you know sikhs were jidda soldiers in world war 1 world war 2 so right. our relationship goes far deeper than that far way back to the pakistan so jidda we can also go back say to the anglo sikh wars jidda the sikhs fought with the east india company as well we can also go back to ranjit singh's regime okay sikh empire period but most importantly the missing element of this is the 18th century jada hai gaya in the 18th century there was just as much of jada relationship going on between the british and sikhs as there was in the later periods as well but the problem we faced is that um, people have never done the research to dig up these archives so what i want to do was take it back to the missile period jada kan ya jada tusi vi hun jada kafi kam kita hoya pakistan vich related to missiles etc finding out the old forts havelia etc that that's why this cover i don't take me a long time to get to it but the cover is about the sick missiles e jado sick ne hamla kita sega delhi de vich in 1783 so the depiction is of baba bagil singh on the car safaj which is in delhi okay you see the smoking so jehdi aap tasveer dekh rahe hain dr saman ek tasveer baba bagil singh ne ਹਾਂ ਜੀ ਹਾਂ ਜੀ ਬਾਬਾ ਬਗੇਲ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਹਾਂ ਜੀ ਸੋ ਫਰਮ ਦਾ ਕੋਰਾ ਸਿੰਘਾ ਮਿਸਲ ਓਕੇ ਸੋ ਕੋਰਾ ਸਿੰਘਾ ਮਿਸਲ ਵਾਸ ਬੇਸਡ ਜਿੱਦਾਂ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਰਿਵਰ ਜਮਨਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਆ ਦੇ ਵਰ ਵੈਰੀ ਵੈਰੀ ਕਾਈਂਡ ਆਫ ਇੰਟਰੈਂਚ ਦੈ ਸੋ ਜਦੋਂ ਸਿੱਖ ਮਿਸਲ ਜਦੋਂ ਦਿੱਲੀ ਨੂੰ ਜਦੋਂ ਹਮਲਾ ਕਰਦੇ ਸੀ ਦੇ ਇਸਟ ਗੋ ਆਲ ਦਾ ਵੇ ਫਰਮ ਜਮਨਾ ਏਰੀਆ ਦੈਟਸ ਵੇਰ ਦੇ ਵਰ ਬੇਸਡ ਬਟ ਦ ਪਿਕਚਰ ਇਟਸੈਲਫ ਡਿਪਿਕਟਸ ਦਾ ਕੰਦੇ ਆ ਬਗੇਲ ਸਿੰਘ ਐਂਡ ਦ ਕਾਸ ਆਫ ਫੌਜ ਐਂਡ ਯੂ ਗੋਟ ਦ ਲਾਲ ਕਿਲਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਪਿੱਛੇ ਹਾਂ ਜੀ is smoldering in the background as well because what it is it's just showing that the sikh forces when they jadon ke aap aata sika delhi de vich there was a big kind of fascination of what was going on but if you go back to the cover because i'm not finished with the cover yet sure, sure. In, in the bottom right hand corner what the gore we are han ji do nazar are lal kapde paye han ji exactly so what i'm trying to say is this is not actually showing the british and the sikhs in any kind of battle jadda ya sir what it is showing is the british were very very concerned that the sikh jidda inna ne kitan delhi de vich hamla kar liya because at the same time jede governor general jidda se ke british they they want to take hamla of um, of of delhi as well so they were very concerned because prior to that they had some descriptions of the sikhs but when jado hamla aaya sika 1783 de vich they had to send envoys to delhi to find out what the sikhs are doing they want to know a lot more about what was going on with them so this is the key concept behind this book i'm starting it back from the 18th century and this is what i really wanted to depict because it's something that not many people had ever kind of did not really talked about essentially ji dr sir you are one of the few historians in the world who is known to have done a lot of field work because most of the historians they try to work in their office in their university or in their you know library you are one of the few who is known i have been listening this for so long that you actually go to the field you mm-hmm. go to the site you try to do field research so pehla mainu ede bare dasso in general uh, like why do you think many the new history students these days they try to get everything from the book without going to the field what advantage do you think you got because you spent i think more time on the field than just sitting and writing the book so your research time was a lot more than to actually pen it down if i if i'm portraying it correctly ਨਹੀਂ ਇਹ ਸਹੀ ਗੱਲ ਆ ਇਹ ਇਹ ਵੈਰੀ ਵੈਰੀ ਇੰਪੋਰਟੈਂਟ ਐਸਪੈਕਟ ਆ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਜਿਹਦਾ ਅਪ ਐਂਡ ਕਮਿੰਗ ਸਕਾਲਰਸ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਹਿਸਟੋਰੀਅਨਸ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਆ ਮੈਂ 100% ਮੈਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਕਹਿੰਦਾ ਆ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਨਾਟ ਰਿਪਲੇਸ ਫੀਲਡ ਵਰਕ ਲੈ ਮੈਂ ਮੈਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਐਗਜ਼ਾਮਪਲ ਦਿੰਦਾ ਜਦੋਂ ਮੈਂ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਕੀਤਾ ਸੀਗਾ ਇੰਟਰਨੈਟ ਵਾਸ ਜਸਟ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਫਾਰਮੂਲੇਟਿੰਗ ਐਟ ਥਿਸ ਟਾਈਮ ਮੈਂ ਆਈ ਸਟਾਰਟਡ ਇਨ 1997 ਐਸੈਂਸ਼ੀਅਲੀ ਸੋ ਇੰਟਰਨੈਟ ਵਾਸ ਜਸਟ ਔਨ ਦ ਰਾਈਜ਼ ਬੇਸਿਕਲੀ ਬਟ ਈਵਨ ਦੈਨ ਇਨਫੋਰਮੇਸ਼ਨ ਵਾਸ ਵੈਰੀ ਲਿਮਿਟਿਡ ਜਿੱਦਾਂ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਇੰਟਰਨੈਟ ਤੇ ਜਿੱਦਾਂ ਸਰਚ ਜਦੋਂ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਸੀ ਨੋ ਗੂਗਲ ਦੈਨ ਐਟ ਥੈਟ ਟਾਈਮ there were smaller search engines but the field work finds out things that you will never find on google this is what i've actually found because aap hi socho jadon tusi koi village vich janne ha you will meet speak to some villagers they will be able to tell you a history that you know it maybe is not captured in kitaba 
is maybe not, is only probably represented orally in the upper Kendia. So that's a kind of that oral tradition, both still strong, have I, and we should tap into that. Unfortunately, now we have too much social media, which where people, everyone thinks there's a scholar. You can't replace the Dapak and their field work. Jadapa, Anglo Sikh War, the battlefields, which Magyasga. I could actually go to the village of Aliwa and actually see where the actual battle took place between the British and the Sikh. It's fascinating. That is more important to me than actually kind of sitting behind a desk and actually revealing things. Jadapa, Dili, Gayasaga. We looked at Dili and Jada, Jada, Jiti Shihid, Hoyasaga, Baba Bandar, Baba Band. Thing. So basically what we've got is these locations and even when we look at Delhi as well, I went to all the Gurdwara which Baba Bagheel Singh actually created as well and also every time I go somewhere, I go to the field first. You're on mute. You're on mute, sir. Sorry, yeah, I, I hope a lot of my friends pay attention to this because this is a very common discussion with me and a lot of my friends who are in the academia and they feel that you know everything can be like i have large uh, you know collection of books no it, the field work is important but once you combine the two then the result is what dr grinderman has given to us right here in form of this book this is a result when you combine the knowledge from the books from the citations from the references plus the field knowledge as doctor said Dr. Man said that the Sikh tradition is very strong in oral tradition. Apni galna bata ni jadi information hai, unni jada hai. Jadi apna lokanal gal karke hi le sakte hain. Wo apnu lokanal gal karke hi mil diya. Jadi agge transmit karni academics the vikt bol bhi iske lagi. Jadi doctor Sangri. So doctor Gurinder Man ji, mera tarakla question hai kya? You have already written two books. Those were on Dasam Granth. This is totally separate topic. Hon to si Dasam Granth to hon idhar Sikh Muslim wal ke mein aage, but got you into this this particular. Ji. Yeah, Jodhami research kita started back in 1997, 2000. Jodhami, Jodhami, Guru Sahib, the Bani, the which man, Dev Das. I'm still looking towards British sources. Now, British sources, Pella Anto, imagine that Dev Das. What was the British thinking about the Sikhs? The over the X amount of years, the Pakedo, Mera Kam, we did the Sikh Museum Initiative, now we have a so up a Sikh relics, which we did that. We'll be talking about that in a short while, but our base or Joe. British, that's it. Um, Punjab, which we coffee there, say East India Company was there for a long time. But it, the problem for me was there was a lot of extensive records that the British kept, and unfortunately, they hadn't been tapped. So, what I want to do is just make a brief assessment 1700 to like in 1900, that different anecdotes, different kind of observations, different relics and artifacts, and package them all together in one book. Because I think most people generally have forgotten that. The, how much information the British actually collected. It is absolutely astounding. And the 18th century, the which we just is where I'm starting from, even on the missile period, is absolutely astonishing what I found over the last couple of years in terms of what's available. So let me welcome all our friends who have joined Preet Kaur, Parminder, Harinder Singh Ji. Uh, he also lives in Leicester, actually. He's from my village, Rala. Uh, Sandupa ji from Toronto, Shari Virk, Kuldeep Singh, Pukhopar, Amin Chauhan ji from Pakistan. Thank you so much, Chauhan sir. Really appreciate it. Or Janevi Dostane, please uh, continue to share this wonderful talk uh, in different groups, in different Facebook groups or WhatsApp groups. It's going to be a big uh, help if we can outreach this a particular segment to a lot of people. Sorry, I know it's Monday and it's the first Monday in US that we all have started working. So most of the people have gone to their work already. This is after two months of lockdown. So we may not have lot of uh, people live joining this because it's the first working day but we will make sure that it's a quality video segment recorded so that you can still kind of spreading the, the word in the in the in, in the days to come so dr samira next question which i have is like you were born in leicester you are you're born in england right yeah so what still got you into sikh heritage and sikh history you had option to study just the gora people and their history you're a historian it's it's of course it's your family background but still why did you focus just on uh, Punjabi, we can even hear Paul Lenny being born here. Like, can you tell me a little bit about this? Just overall, what got you to Sikhism? History? I think, yeah, no, a, a very good question. I Pelato, man, generally interested in history and heritage, but Pelato is my interest in Sikhism. I studied all the religions of the world first, first Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Taoism, 
prehistoric religions, Africa, the which um, South Asian religions, Maso Chapala, Sikito Pella Japa Dehnaya. We need to have a thorough understanding of world religions first. Now, all they've asked him a Pella Koj Gitaska. So, roughly between 95 and 97, Maso Chachala Honapa Sikito Apa Honapa Tianle. So, that's when I actually started towards um, looking towards, you know, Sikh history and heritage. But unfortunately, there was a big problem for me. The information was very, very repetitive. It was all the same information. It was all about the same kind of topics. May I wanted to do something different. Get a push, get a kiss, need to look at any hoga before field work. It does you can now and to try and increase the art or shakana. Sadako to shakana. We have a treasury of pearls and jewels of information, which is not just for the Sikh people, it, this is for the people globally all around the world. And that has always been my mission, not just to share our work but to share it globally with people from all different faiths and religions as well, because that's the only way Sikhi is going to do it is when we've actually made sure that the light of Sikhi is shown throughout the world. Okay, I'm going to show one image actually that is from your work and if you can help us understand is picture accordingly shift kita upna timeline and with the British and six. So what are you trying to show in this particular image here? So basically, it covers roughly 200 years time span. So we started with Guru Gobind Singh ascension from that period. We're looking at the area of the rise of Banda Singh Bahadur as well, which is catalogued in this book and in terms of the Shahidi of Banda Singh. And then it leads into the Sikh Missile period and hence why the cover depicts Baba Bagheel Singh, which I've kind of mentioned. But at the same time, did that again, the Sikh missiles were rising. The East India Company was rising at the same time as well. So the trajectory did that again, Sikhadi and East India Company is very, very similar from the 1750s onwards, if you look at it. Abdali did finish Hogyasiga, and the East India Company was still kind of wrangling with the did the Marhatas did that again, and the Rohillas as well. So Delhi became the battleground. So when we get to the 1800 period, did that again, so Ranjit Singh the did the Sikh Empire, did the, he wrestled off all the, did the Sikh missiles, essentially. But then what I'm talking about within the book is, I didn't just primarily want to talk about Ranjit Singh, I also want to talk about the different treaties that were enacted between the British and the Sikhs. A code we got did of importance, did the, I wanted you to look at, was the Christian missionary, I say, Punjab, which, what was the effect of the Christian missionaries? What were they trying to do? But interestingly, this book is not trying to say the great things about the Sikhs or the great things about the British or the bad things about the British or any bad things about the Sikhs. It'll try to be a balanced approach. So you know, when we look at the Christian missionaries, it's really interesting to know how they were fighting with the East India Company when they were in India. So British. But what does British actually mean? There's still denominations of the British in groups as well. So Maybe break down Kanaska Kadav the Bichwe. So the book into the Anglo Sikh wars as well. And the Anglo Sikh wars in terms of what was the problem say in terms of what the British faced, but whether the actual crossing of the Sutlaj Dra was actually just was it the Sikhs who actually literally crossed against the Sikh, uh, the British border as well? So I'll talk a little bit about that as well. Throughout the book as well, as to what was the impact of the British on the Nahang Singhs, because Nahang Singhs vehemently they were anti-British from day one as well. So I thought it was very, very important to discuss that. This book leads on to translations of the Guru Granth Sahib as well, leading to the end of the annexation of Punjab, Koyasaga. We wind up with um, the the Sikhs employment did that again into the British Indian Army, but also looking at the uh, the, the the actual fascination of, of the Punjab Maharajas as well, because technically they were on the Sisutlad states, did that So they were originally always sided with the British, but this was due to many factors, and I go into that in deep length uh, in, within the book as well. Man, I would take a question. I got generals, you don't see the history, but much much of the body, you do so we then like that okay, Pella upon Galakiti a Mughal period the and you know then later on uh upon a missile period aga and yeah. then Maharaja Sikh period aga fair British period. Aga. But what I'm seeing from here is that you are talking British period from way earlier. You have you're connecting it to like 
you're not starting it from 1849 jadon fifth no. british domination sigi you have even started the timeline from 1700 that is I'm amazing not, that you're connect, that you're I'm connecting not. british at least a century and a half earlier is that part of your work also you are you're seeing some early establishments of british in there in your book ha ji ha ji so tahi ta main jada shuru kita guru gobind singh de time to main shuru kita ya amazing amazing banda bahadur singh and then there's a bit of a lull period quiet time jada hai ga thodya but really jada pakenia clive of india was talking about the sikhs okay not many people know the clive of india first governor general british da he was talking about the sikhs because ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਸੀਗਾ ਇਹ ਕਲਕੱਤਾ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਬੈਠੇ ਸੀਗੇ they knew that there was a barrier between punjab and delhi and there was only one group who was stopping abdali at that time okay and that was the sikhs and so it was bound to get into the british psyche to understand who the british were sorry the sikhs were based just on the fact gore bhi scared sige of the abdali they knew abdali was coming and doing his raids every couple of years into delhi and and you know destroying and doing whatever he used to do but the british you know they actually had their spies everywhere as well and therefore they wrote down everything they saw as well so it's very very fascinating yeah, i kind of concur with that because i i'm writing something about rawalpindi now and then british it is in the early 19th century their people are going their missionaries are christian missionaries are going from their church in ludhiana to um, rawalpindi and he's discussing the god presence with the priest there with the you know jada one of the mission the sikh priest hai so it's so interesting that means jada british di apan je study karni hai we can't just take over from the anglo sikh wars it starts way before that jada one of the spies sege ya missionaries sege that's what the, i think the uh, central idea here is and that's what timeline you have shown that it starts early on and we have to slowly understand ki oh kidda holi 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 ohna ne apne jede pair jamaye hai right 100% ਨਾਲ ਇੱਕ ਹੋਰ ਵੀ ਜਿਹਦਾ ਫੈਕਟਰ ਹੈਗਾ ਜਦੋਂ ਆਪਾਂ ਰਣਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਪੇੜ ਵੀ ਆਪਾਂ ਦੇਖਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਜਦੋਂ ਟ੍ਰੀਟੀ ਆਫ 1809 ਟੂਕ ਪਲੇਸ ਯੂ نو देयर ਵਰ ਰੈਜ਼ੀਡੈਂਟਸ ਜਿਹ ਦਾ ਰੈਜ਼ੀਡੈਂਟਸ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਆ ਦੇ ਵਰ ਹੈਵਿੰਗ ਰੈਗੂਲਰ ਡਾਇਲੌਗ ਵਿਦ ਰਣਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਵੀਕਲੀ ਬੇਸਿਸ ਫਰਮ ਦਾ ਦਿਆਲਾ ਫਰਮ ਆਲਾ 20 ਇਅਰਸ ਨਾਨ ਸਟਾਪ ਥੀਸ ਲੈਟਰਸ ਸਟਿਲ ਐਗਜ਼ਿਸਟ ਟੋਕਿੰਗ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਦੀ ਜਿਹ ਦਾ ਟੈਰੀਟਰੀ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਸੀਗੇ ਡਾਕਟ੍ਰਿਨ ਆਫ ਲੈਪਸ ਦੇ ਦੇ ਬ੍ਰਿਟਿਸ਼ ਵਰ ਯੂਜ਼ਿੰਗ ਦੇ ਓਨ ਕਾਈਂਡ ਆਫ ਲਾਅਸ ਇਨ ਇੰਡੀਆ ਐਸ ਵੈਲ to actually you know make land dispersions etc as well so people forget that there's a lot of things going on you know even before we get to the anglo sikh uh, war period there was absolutely 100% interest with the british with the sikh and it wasn't wasn't and i make this clear if the british wanted to take over the punjab they could have done so right from the early period of ranjit singh but they didn't so that's something to think about it only took place in 1846 okay 1846 6 years uh, yeah roughly 6 years um, after uh, maharaja ranjit singh the death so it just shows you it wasn't about a power thing it was whether the british could actually hold on to a vast trajectory of land as well this is about resources it was the same reason why the marathas couldn't penetrate in the punjab as well because they were right down down the bottom in pune area so even when the marathas during the um, missile period helped adina beg for instance they were only there temporarily because they couldn't maintain the resources the british had the same issue with the gas of the punjab as well so sometimes it's not just about who is taking over it is literally talking about military strength resources and i think this is the key key, key point about when did the um, you know countries or um, armies take over certain areas ਜੀ ਗੁਰਿੰਦਰ ਮਾਨ ਜੀ ਔਰ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੁਝ ਹੋਰ ਦੋਸਤ ਨਾਲ ਜੁਆਇਨ ਹੋਏ ਨੇ ਕਰਮਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਮਾਨ ਹਰਪਿੰਦਰ ਪਰਟਵਾਲ ਹਿਸਟੋਰੀਅਨ ਹਰਪੀਤ ਕੌਰ ਤੀਰ ਜੀ ਹਰਿੰਦਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਸ਼ਹਿਰੀ ਸ਼ਹਿਰੀ ਐਂਡ ਗੁਰਪੇਜ ਸਿੰਘ ਗਰਾਇਆ ਜੀ ਫਰਮ ਸਾਹਿਤ ਸਭਾ ਦਿੱਲੀ ਬੁਸ਼ੀਸ਼ ਨਾਗੀ ਪਰਮਿੰਦਰ ਕੁਮਾਰੀ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਸੋ ਮਚ एवरीवन ਫॉर ਜੁਆਇਨਿੰਗ ਐਂਡ ਰੀਲੀ ਅਪਰੀਸ਼ੀਏਟ 올 ਯੋਰ ਵੰਡਰਫੁਲ ਕਮੈਂਟਸ ਸੌਰੀ ਟੁਡੇ ਵੀਲ ਜਸਟ ਫੋਕਸ ਔਨ ਮਾਨ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਵੀ ਵਿਲ ਟੇਕ ਕੇਅਰ ਆਫ ਦ ਕਮੈਂਟਸ ਐਂਡ ਯੋਰ ਕੁਐਸਚਨਸ ਲੇਟਰ ਔਨ ਐਂਡ ਮਾਨ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਬਿਫੋਰ ਆਈ ਗੋ ਟੂ ਦ ਨੈਕਸਟ ਟੌਪਿਕ ਫॉर ਟੁਡੇ ਵਿਚ ਇਜ਼ ਗੋਇੰਗ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਯੋਰ 뮤ਜ਼ੀਅਮ ਆਈ ਹੈਵ ਜਸਟ ਵਨ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਬਹੁਤ ਇੰਟਰਸਟ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਕਿ ਜਦੋਂ ਵੀ ਮੈਂ ਕੋਈ ਕਿਤਾਬ ਪੜਾਂ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੁਝ ਪੁਰਾਣੀਆਂ ਚਿੱਠੀਆਂ ਜਾਂ ਕੁਝ ਪੁਰਾਣਾ ਡਾਟਾ ਮਿਲੇ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਨਹੀਂ ਲੱਭਿਆ ਵਾਟ ਕੈਨ ਦ ਰੀਡਰਸ ਆਫ ਯੋਰ ਬੁੱਕ ਐਕਸਪੈਕਟ ਇਜ਼ देयर ਸਮਥਿੰਗ ਲਾਈਕ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਕੋਟਡ ਜਿਹਦਾ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਉਹ ਬਹੁਤ ਸ਼ੌਂਕ ਰਹਿੰਦਾ ਲਾਈਕ ਹੈਵ ਯੂ ਪੁੱਟ ਸਮਥਿੰਗ ਇਨ ਵਿਚ ਆਈ ਸ਼ੁੱਡ ਐਕਸਪੈਕਟ ਕਿ ਹਾਂ ਮੈਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਦੇਖਿਆ ਹੋਇਆ ਕੈਨ ਯੂ ਲਾਈਕ ਹੈਡ ਯ
Every footnote is a nugget. Okay, do the law footnote and lick the on there. They write the name of the book. I'm yeah. giving information on all the Khalsa who were there. I'm giving information every Britisher and their actual relationship even now in England as well. So that's one key point. But my favorite part of this Qatar, when we're talking about the Sikh missiles, is there was dialogue between the Sikh missiles and the British. Okay, so just so Singh Alawali as head of the Buddha Dal actually wrote letters to the British. And I've included one letter within the book itself in the appendix. So that is something which is bit, you know, very, very interesting as to at this early period, the British and the Sikhs are having a dialogue. The dialogue broke off, but that's the Allah. But the fact that they were writing letters to each other is very, very interesting. I think that's very, very important for people to understand this British Sikh kind of relationship. Gee, Brother Manji, now we're going to shift our topic from your book, The British and the Sikhs, uh, to our next topic, which is Sikh Museum. But before we go there, can you please tell Jake Sinikitab Lani Hove, where is it available from? Is it on Amazon or what is the website for to purchase your book, The British okay. and the Sikhs? pandemic so luckily the kitab has been released generally it's available in the uk so website hellion.co.uk and secondly it is available on amazon.co.uk as well but eventually it will be available in other markets but you know to see around the world if you go to helium.co.uk, they do actually send to every area all around the world. Thank you so much, Man Sabhan. Let's go towards your museum. If I understand it well, you know, for the last four and five years, I have not seen anything like this in which uh, Sikh digital projects, I think it's kind of first global digital project which has recreated the objects in 3D. So mm -hmm. that's how I have been seeing your pioneering work. I'm very impressed. And actually, that's how I first learned about you many years ago from that one you know um so can you please tell us more about the anglo sikh museum that you have created in england and what does it do what are its accomplishments general sanu help us to understand the only motivation what was your motivation behind setting up anglo sikh museum gee so um about roughly 2014 2015 um did that to open up an actual physical museum did that there but the costs were too much okay did not coffee did up um consultations up with various groups essentially but the key point we wanted to do was actually do something fresh something new did up again there so i i was speaking to a very very talented individual by the name of taranjit singh okay he's from the company taran 3d and we were just discussing and saying look the digital side has always been neglected always jodo jodo koi exhibition kardaya digital side we are neglecting this we are already behind the world with the Sikh calm in terms of Sikh history and heritage I wanted to come up with something new something fresh which was keep us on par with other religions as well so the idea simply was to digitize and actually create an online museum using various kinds of digital technology various okay so I'm going to talk through these basically. So the reason, okay, the reason behind this, uh, before these, before I discuss the technology, is because our pay so chow kinnan naksan sada kam the choya hoya agge. The 1984 the blue tower attack in Lahore, so we lost a lot of relics, and you know the, the buildings were damaged, uh, the Basab, Akal Taksab manuscripts, etc. But in 2015, something also happened as well. Palmera in Syria. Palmyra was attacked by ISIS and they destroyed their uh, kind of buildings, the museums, etc. as well. So me and Taranjit Apao tempted Galkar Desige. And as we were talking, and we were talking about how the building could be recreated, people were already working on preserving to save the museum through two different technologies. One was 3D mapping and the other was through 3D printing. Okay, this is 2015. We're also starting at the same time as well. Or, or that gave us a lot of impetus and motivation to do something similar because what are we going to do about it what can we do before anything like this happens so the idea was to actually use various types of technology 
and I'm going to mention them once augmented reality where technology can be made to be seen in front of you. Okay, for instance, 3D printing, 3D modeling, and 3D modeling leads to a lot of the technologies we're talking about, and also virtual reality, which is what we've started doing recently as well. So various types of digital technology could be used. The, the first time we actually demonstrated this was in 2016, okay? And I'm gonna show you a model in a second. You want me to turn to the models now or? Um, uh, so yeah, my next yeah. question was going to be like, how did you create all this? So maybe that will help us if you can show us some models. And I got a question from Hardeep Singh regarding your book and some other questions regarding the book. We will take care of those questions after we finish the Sikh okay. Museum talk. And I will definitely get back to questions of Sardar Hardeep Singh. That's a very interesting question. I love it. But let's finish the Sikh Museum that we are talking about. How to convert the Sikh relics into digital? My next okay. point is like, how did how is it done? How is the digitalization done? So if you can either show us some models or help me understand how, how would you do that? OK, um, so at the moment, um, this is our website, www.anglosikmuseum.com. So in the upper first phase of actually recreating relics in 3D, OK? So the idea behind them, OK, I'll start off with the So in 2016, our Bella did the project did the to recreate the Dagandaya, the Charena of Guru Gobind Singh Ji. Okay. So before I talk exactly about the Charena, it's very, very important to actually understand what we're talking about here. So Mansa Methonikman Trokana, what does Charena mean? Is it something like a what is what does it mean? A Panja for see the word haga, Charena. Persian language, which means four mirrors, okay, char rena, okay, char four rena. So char rena, did you have any breastplate in English? Which we can oh, char, tank char to banana char rena, okay, char bosses. Haji, but it's still a Persian word, though, still a Persian word, but it has its did you have um, any terminology in Persian language as well? So okay. before I even talk about the char rena, the technology involves two things. Upper, we can actually recreate objects from photographs. The photograph karke object no upper recreate upper kasa the object or upper 3D scanner use kasa there around an object as well. So we've got access to all kinds of technology which allows us to do these kind of things. So this was actually created in 2016 by Taranjit. The idea being to actually recreate the Jarena of Guru Gobind Singh Ji. So remember, keep this in focus. We did not have access to this Jarena, okay? We did not have access to this. This was actually recreated just from photographs, basically, okay? So this was actually painstakingly recreated bit by bit, just like a painter or a conservator would actually recreate an object. So essentially, it was recreated from photographs and actually created as if it were done in the Battle of Pagani Saab, okay? So this is where history tells us that the Charena was actually worn by Guru Sahib in the Battle of Char in the Battle of Bagani Sahib, for instance. So we have the Gurbani, which was actually painstakingly recreated as well. So what it allows this, what this museum allows you to do is actually see objects close up from different vantage points that you would never be able to see in a traditional museum, for instance. And I can move on to another object if that's okay. Um, Dr. Saab. So just to give another indication of the objects that we've been working on, for instance, what we also want to do was uh, with our uh, Sikh Museum, we didn't want to make everything military. Guns, shields, everything like that. So let's take a different take on things. So what we also want to do was focus on the history of objects from the Leap Singhs period as well. So what I'm showing you now is an object which is in a private collection to UK, which private collection of Chagaya. So we have a work, we work with museums and we work with private collectors as well. So this is a tikka, jida ladies on there on front of their on top of their heads basically. So this tikka eventually was actually with Sophia Dalip Singh, okay? Sophia Dalip Singh was the daughter of uh, Dalip Singh, okay? And this, what we understand, came from 
the Lahore Darbar, and it was belonged to Maharani Jindanko, for instance. Okay, so this object came down from Punjab, was given or taken down to England, was part of the Leap Singh's collection, and eventually this went down to Sophia the Leap Singh as well. So we can actually see objects really close up as well and in their entirety objects which you would never be able to see in a traditional museum for instance so we wanted to focus on objects which aren't just traditionally military in a sense as well so that was another focus in Napakania. we're still building it up the whole idea of Napakania is to probably have more than 20 plus objects before we finish in august our phase one in Napakania of the anglo Sikh virtual museum will finish in august august this year Okay, let's take you to another object as well. I'm going to go to the Kohinoor in a second, something special for all the viewers. So, what's really interesting is that the Toshakana in Pakistan was kind of raided by the British, okay, in 1849 after the Anglo Sikh Wars. But there's also many objects which are actually in the UK which were actually gifted as well and i talk about this in my book as well so this um kanda that we're looking at is a kanda with a pistol on it so very very interesting it's got a pistol on this as well so this is considered to be very very ceremonial in a sense so this was not meant to be used in battle it was ceremonial cigar so the maharaj of punjab like the maharaj of patiala this belonged to maharaj of, of patiala and essentially this was actually given by the Maharajas to be sold in an auction in Paris. And at the same time, it's a museum in land which I got from in, in Nottingham. They were just form, forming at the same time. So they went to this auction in Paris and they bought many, many items belonging to the Sikh Maharajas. And this is what we recreated in 3D. So we were able to get access to this uh, Kanda sword in Nottingham, which is close from where we live in Leicester. They gave us permission to actually digitize this in 3D as well. So not only is our museum about relics, we're up a tricot there, history. We're trying to tell, teach you history as well about objects, where are they kept in the UK as well. So I think that's primarily the reason for having this Anglo Sikh virtual museum is that we can see objects that you can't. So some of these museums um, have these objects locked up. You can't see them even now. OK, so it, that's very, very important to actually understand. And one other thing we wanted to focus on was the Kuhinu diamond. So Kuhinu diamond kia. We know that the Kuhinu diamond sits in the Queen Mother's the crown, the Kendaya, but no one really focuses on what it looked like during the time of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, for instance. OK, so this is what we want to do is actually focus on the object in terms of what it looked like in 1851, before it was recut, and at the time of the Maharaj Ranjit Singh, he used to wear it as an armband on his arm, basically. So this is really, really interesting because we're not just trying to recreate objects, we're trying to teach history at the same time as well. So this project, for instance, is very, very uh, beneficial, not just for adults, but also the Bajjianovi, Hunapa, but digital technologies, what use got there? They will be very, very interested in looking at this on an iPad, for instance, and actually seeing various kind of objects. But remember this as well. Objects, it's not just on the website. You can actually view this on your mobile phone as well. So you can load this website on angloseatmuseum.com and you can load this up and you can view this and can do that all on George Hosada with Sikh history and Sikh Atiyas as well. Uh, one sub, ek, but an important question is that when we look at the you know, they have 3D goggles where like, it's a whole immersive uh, uh, environment create hoya, and it's a different experience. Will this look different if we have especially those goggles in our dental office we, for patients, we give them these 3D goggles. So thoda jada, like, how does this fit into that thing if someone has that those goggles at their home? Does it make a difference? Or? And he bought both different Sagaya. So let me just explain this as well. So prior to um, this museum going online, our focus was on digital technologies in terms of something called 3D screens we have here, which we take out on the road. But also we have what we call virtual reality glasses. 
So virtual reality glasses are mena hega. You put them on your head and you're able to see the objects. And now you can interact with them as well. So I did the Sikha Hega of the Sikh Empire, for instance. Um, you can actually almost touch this now with our virtual reality goggles as well. So, you know, it's not just a case of looking at these objects, up interact with us there. So this is immersive technology we're talking about here. This is not just we look at it, it's not 1D, not 2, 3D. It is actually being in tune with virtual reality and actually so even with the guns that I've shown, you can actually pick up the gun, for instance. And next stage is we're going to be having some musical instruments as well. With Apasoja, we may be able to even use the technology to play the instruments. So that's the level of detail and the level we're going to in terms of this actual museum itself. Answer, this is amazing. So approximately total, how many things you have already digitalized and how many do you have already in the pipeline? What is your, is there oh, any number of the, items, relics? The we're going to be looking at by the end of um, August is 20 objects. Sunday funding is for 20 objects only. We do not have the capacity to go beyond this. We would love to do a lot more until August. Uh, we don't know where the project is going to take us after August. We'll have to see and then take it from there. We would love uh, the Sangat's um, kind of blessings on this all around the world. If people want to donate, they can do. They can go to our website at angloseatmuseum.com. They can donate as well. We want to do that, have a lot of dialogue up at on air, and which is probably leading to your next questions as well. But we want dialogue with organizations all across the world to actually not just to share what we're doing, but maybe we can help them in terms of what they're trying to achieve what are the motivations here? Because this kind of technology should be in every sun, single Gudwar, really. Forget the museum. This experience should be in every Gudwar in the world, basically. And we have digital touch screens where, you know, we can employ this as well. So that's the kind of thing we want to try to achieve and try to attain with the Sangat's help and with lots of different organizations as well around the world. Uh, Mansab, can you see the comments on the right side? There's a nice question in the same context. Can you see the comments or you cannot? I can't okay, let me read it. I can't I'll read. No, no, okay, don't don't go to this page. That's okay. Don't don't go. Okay. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so no, sorry. So, so there's a question. There's yeah, a question no. from Stinder Singh Ji. Uh, do we plan to take this to the world on historical events like kiosks, like booths with virtual re reality specs, and can it be spread to the like bottom? Jadi am sangat takapa. Chote chote booth la ke gurdwara sab de bahar koi masya sangrang mille. So basically, the concept is it's a traveling museum anyway. So traveling museum is a digital touch screens. Digital touch screens, they've been on the road since 2016. Since 2016, we've gone to shopping centers, we've gone to the Gudwaras, we've gone to you name it in the UK, the bit upper and showcases upper kite pochna. So it's already a traveling museum. So traveling in terms of digital touch screens, this are the virtual and reality headsets as well. You got to remember, in terms of uh, what we're taking out. So we're bringing the museum tunnel. So we've been already doing this in the UK, and hopefully in the future we can do this around the world as well. So it's a good question from Paisa. Sure, thank you. All right, so for my friends, panel the book is separate. So sorry. So the, the website is anglosikmuseum.com. So anybody who wants to visit the website is I have posted a link also, anglosikmuseum.com, and the link is working. I just checked it and I pasted the correct spellings here once again. And let's show this quickly once again, doctor. So this is the actual website. Anybody who wants to watch it from their comfort of their home, visit anglosikmuseum.com. This is the link that I just posted. Uh, just Paul Singh Dhanava ji. Okay, on mil gaya. Bilkul thik hai ji. Man sahab hona paan. Uh, thank you, Preet Kaur. Ek do question uh, hor sege. Ede bari fir apan then we'll go to the last part of our discussion. Ek sega ki oh, Kohenur de bari si. I think the question was from mm -hmm. Preet Kaur ji regarding Kohenur that uh, were you able to see some patrons? Kush, itna sega no the question hona actually. I lost it in my comments. There are a lot of comments here. Like when you oh, were. Yeah. yeah. No, no, go ahead. Sorry. So what are you able to uh, see any patterns in the terms of form, texture, shape, color, extra? Okay, so in fact, let's go back to the Kuyunur so I can just define it. 
ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕੋਹੀ ਨੂੰ ਡਾਇਮੰਡ ਜਿੱਦਾਂ ਆਪਾਂ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਆ ਉਹ ਜਿੱਦਾਂ ਕਟ ਕਟ ਸਗਾ ਓਕੇ ਸੋ ਇਟਸ ਕਟ ਬਟ ਵਨ ਥਿੰਗ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹੁਣ ਸਟਿਲ ਇਜ਼ ਇੰਟੈਕਟ ਓਕੇ ਇਜ਼ ਦ ਥਰੈਡਿੰਗ ਵਿਚ ਕੀਪਸ ਦ ਕੋਹੀ ਨੂ ਟੁਗੇਦਰ ਸੋ ਆ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਸੋ ਵੀ ਸੀ ਦ ਰੈਡ ਥਰੈਡਿੰਗ ਥੈਟ ਇਜ਼ ਸਟਿਲ ਇਨ ਦ ਰੋਇਲ ਕਲੈਕਸ਼ਨ ਨਾਓ ਓਕੇ ਸੋ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਸਟਿਲ ਇਨ ਦ ਰੋਇਲ ਕਲੈਕਸ਼ਨ this area here the threading you know which holds the jidda pa kehne ya they go in all together so this still actually exists and is still in the world collection which people don't know as well so that's an additional jidda pa kehne ya facet to the work we were doing as well so we were able to recreate this remember okay so we were able to recreate this because really most people don't even know this still exists as well even to this day so it's just another take on the actual situation of what we know about what's intact and what's not intact okay, next question was to see ek cheez hor dikhaun lage si can you please show that once again that looked so pretty is to pehla oh, when okay, i asked so, you this question or question if you can please show yeah. that also before so, we go on to our next segment haji haji so i think i was going to look at the um, yes the arm this one yes that's right so once again jidda pa kehne sige eh vi jidda private collection de vichon aaya hoya so eh vi jidda we're saying belong to Sophia the Leap Singh as well. So Avi did that, it was handed down. And this is also from the Sikh Empire period as well. But it's really, really fascinating that if you look at it in depth, so you can see the actual emeralds and jewelry really close up as well. So this is something that you would never be able to see really, really close up. But look at the exquisite work that's been put into this kind of jewelry which was part of the sikh empire during the time of maharaja ranjit singh but um i think what we have to also focus on is that um these things are material did that back in there so you know they are material and these are things that we need to actually focus on when we look at sikh history and heritage it's a different facet compared with arms and armor did that back in there but what it does show you is the did that the level of quality workmanship did that pakan there or workmanship as well at the time of the sikh empire so the lahore period is very very interesting to actually note how how good the effect was of the craftsmanship did that pakan there not just of arms and armor but of jewelry as well and this is something very much to note and should be in you know enforced on people when we talk about sikh history and heritage Thank you so much Mansab I think so this concludes our topic about Anglo Sikh virtual museum we will go to the last segment of our talk today uh odevich hon mera question ta you know kal parso main ek talk show kita si amritsar safety da kar and then i connected mm-hmm. with the city of lahore lahore mm-hmm. sir and everybody was kind of uh, laughing at me ke mera mera bus chale te main sara kuch cha ke lahore hi le jama so i mm-hmm. connect everything even the line amritsar safety da kar i tried to connect i didn't try to connect it is it, i think it's it's meant for the city of lahore and i had a big talk show about that so my question again is mera dhyan udhar hi janda hai ki pakistan de vich do tarah di cheezan paiyan ik ta hagiyan sab to pehla ki jehde relics paye utthe museum ch bahut paye hai hun tuhadi vi access hai ki meri vi hagi hai can this work of yours include the objects and relics sitting in either private libraries or private collections or the museums in pakistan and what kind of support would you need for that pehla apan sirf objects di gal kariye relics di ha ji ha ji Uh, yeah tika pala um, before we answer your question um let's break this down to that again here pale age relics and we'll talk about buildings as well uh, that will be the second question yeah okay so relics last day jidda mai kya sada project takes us to august this year basically so august is phase 1 apa tone ya jidda kafi jidda extension of way to the anglo sikh virtual museum so apa tone ya so jire different to the museum ajeb gar hai ya lahore de vich you know there's some very fascinating museums in lahore and there's a lot of history related with the uh, sikh empire in pakistan we would love to actually digitize objects in pakistan as well appa kehne ya jehde organizations utthe hai gaya individuals hai gaya business people hai gaya they need to get in contact with us so that we can possibly come over to pakistan we can look at the objects which can be digitized we can actually do it on the day we can do it on the spot as well possibly in terms of digitization and then for to go back and actually recreate the environments where this information and these objects can be recreated but age da sabkush has to come from the sangat this has to project has to be led from pakistan 
The budget has to come from Pakistan as well. There has to be two or three people who are combining together and saying, look, we have this amount of money. Can you do X, Z and Y based on this budget so we can go out there? But in order to actually recreate the objects, we can you, we can already see that. We can, there's no issue in terms of recreating the objects. It's more about what objects we want to recreate. Is there any objects which are partially broken, defaced, which we can recreate as well to make it like they were originally was? So that's the kind of support we're going to need from the people in Pakistan, which will not only help them, it will help us, it will help generally all around the world in terms of accessing the heritage of Pakistan, which is very inaccessible, if that makes sense. And you know that because you're not to see Kiniwari to the guy who in Pakistan, the bitch, very difficult to get to places. Well, we only need to get there once. Okay, that's the difference. We only need to get there once to photograph, digitize, and then we're on our way to do our coming. But how will this, like, you know, they want us to go there more. They want to promote tourism. So we have to keep this somehow so that they keep generating interest for this because everybody, every country wants to bring the tourists there. So maybe some kind of mutual cooperation, some MOU can be done in which you go there once, we will have all the objects as much they can allow. I think we, we can get there with the help of a lot of friends there, but also their eventually goal is to bring the people. Does but this make sense? But, this but I think once they see it online, they get more tempted to go there. That's what I feel. When we started working with museums, you're going to keep, you're going to take us out of a job because you can online it. That's not the, that's not the focus of these projects. Let me just give you a case in point. Okay. Ek object did up a recreate kitty was a sword by Sapinder Singh Paul here in London. What we did was Appa Shoki Kitasa or the sword in 3D. Then he brought the same sword to the Gudwara, okay, Chapel's Bush Gudwara in London. There was fascination with the original. There was fascination with the 3D model as well. What we're trying to say is, do you know the 3D model Kale object? We can then have the digital showcase next to the actual sword itself, actual objects, because that creates extra interest. This project. It's not a replacement of museum, it's an enhancement of museums. Okay, you can actually have the museum on your phone as well. Okay, we know that we can have it on your phone, but also we want to work with all these institutions, so therefore we exactly. can have the touch screens as well. So it's side by side with the original object. Because look, you know, and, and of, yeah, and of course we will yeah, and of course we will go with the institution's policy. We will ask them, we will explain to them. It's just exactly like how. When I started reading my chapters a few weeks ago on mm. my people said Ki, tujhe the bolli jana, who's gonna buy the book? But it, it turned out to be opposite. The more I'm reading the chapters, I'm able to have more promotion of the book and more people are purchasing it because it's so reading the book online is helping me. So same thing. If any museum allows you to digitalize their relics, actually people are gonna go in there more. They're gonna they want to now see it right there. So your extension is helping them to create curiosity. And I think uh, we have a few more questions. Uh, yeah, you, you're let going to say something. Me, let me just add to that. And then you is not on the bit. So the objects are not on display, okay? They're not on display, okay? Uh -huh. So the kanda sword up a recreate kit. They were so happy with it. They're now going to put that onto display next year. You're another museum did that or renovate in 2022, uh, 2020. One uh, essentially, they're going to be re they're going to be put that on display. So it just shows you Sada Kamajera Hega is working because the museums here in the UK are starting to get in tune with it as well. We're working with the VNA as well, the big institutions, the Royal Armies, for instance, as well. So these are small little museums. We're working with the cream of the cream museums here in the UK. Gee, my great friend, he's a curator in museum. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so no, 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 my no. question was, he's a good friend of mine, you know, he's, he's oh, wonderful yeah. and we will be working with him a lot. So the point yeah. is we will go work with your institutions, but we want to do it. We want to actually promote your visitors in your institutes in Pakistan. I'm not talking, let's say Pakistan was, is my focus, but it can be India, it can be Singapore, it can be Canada. We yeah. want to promote the tourists there with the help of digital technology. So my uh, last question before I go to people, uh, question is, Doc. How do we do about the buildings in Pakistan? I will show you one quick picture as an example. I need your help. I see Kal Shoki Tasaga. Let's say this is a building in Pakistan, which Guru Sahibandi photo hai. 
for me it's yeah. very precious because first i wrote it's guru gobind singh ji and then i sent to editor he said no ਨਾਲ ਡੌਗ ਦੀ ਫੋਟੋ ਹੈ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਡੌਗ ਹੈਗਾ ਜਨਰਲੀ ਇਹ ਗੁਰੂ ਹਰਗੋਬਿੰਦ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਭਾਈ ਗੁਰਦਾਸ ਦੀ ਵਾਰ ਸੋ ਆਈ ਫਾਉਂਡ ਇਟ ਵੈਰੀ ਇੰਟਰਸਟਿੰਗ ਬਿਕੋਜ਼ ਆਈ ਸਾਅ ਸਮਥਿੰਗ ਨਾਲ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਊਟ ਤੋਂ ਕੋਈ ਹੋਰ ਕੈਰੈਕਟਰ ਆ ਰਿਹਾ ਨੀਚੇ ਫਰਿਸ਼ਤੇ ਹੈਗੇ ਆ ਫਾਰਸੀ ਦੇ ਪਰਜੀਅਨ ਕਲਚਰ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਵਾਸ ਜਸਟ ਟੋਲਡ ਟੂ ਮੀ ਜਸਟ ਡਿਡ ਬਾਈ ਸੋਨੀਆ ਤਾਂ ਮੈਂ ਆਈ ਡਿਡਨਟ ਈਵਨ ਨੋ ਥੈਟ ਔਰ ਛੱਤ ਦੇ ਉੱਪਰ ਗੋਲਡ ਇੰਬੈਲਿਸ਼ਮੈਂਟ ਹੈਗੀ ਆ ਸੋ ਇਹ ਚੀਜ਼ਾਂ ਆਪਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਪਕਸ ਔਰ ਇਹ ਧਾਰਮਿਕ ਸਟਰਕਚਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈਗੇ ਬਿਕੋਜ਼ ਇਨ ਗੁਰਦੁਆਰਸ ਦੀਸ ਥਿੰਗਸ ਆਫ ਥਿੰਗਸ ਵਿਲ ਕ੍ਰੀਏਟ ਅ ਲੋਟ ਆਫ ਕੰਟਰੋਵਰਸੀ ਕਿ ਗੁਰਦੁਆਰਾ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਟਸ ਨਾਟ ਗੁਰਦੁਆਰਾ ਥੀਸ ਆਰ ਸਮਾਲ ਮੋਨੂਮੈਂਟਸ ਪਿੰਡਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਨਾ ਸਾਡੇ ਦੁਆਬ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਜਗ੍ਹਾ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਆ ਫਲਾਨੇ ਦੀ ਜਗ੍ਹਾ ਫਲਾਨੇ ਦੀ ਜਗ੍ਹਾ ਇਹ ਜਗ੍ਹਾ ਹੈਗੀਆਂ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨ ਚ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੈਗੀਆਂ ਸੋ ਇਹ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਕੋਈ ਕੰਟਰੋਵਰਸੀ ਹੈ ਨਹੀਂ ਪਰ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਪ੍ਰਿਜ਼ਰਵ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਟੈਕਨੋਲੋਜੀ ਹੁਣ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਰੈਲਿਕਸ ਆਈਆਂ ਉਹ ਤਾਂ ਮੈਂ ਸਮਝ ਗਿਆ ਰੈਲਿਕਸ ਨਾਲ ਤੋਂ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਪ੍ਰਿਜ਼ਰਵ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਹੋ ਬਟ ਹਾਊ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਥੀਸ ਆਰਟ ਵਰਕ ਫਰੈਸਕੋਸ ਮੁਰੈਲਸ ਵਿਚ ਆਰ ਇਨ ਦਾ ਬਿਲਡਿੰਗ ਇਹ ਬਿਲਡਿੰਗ ਹੁਣ ਜਾਣ ਵਾਲੀ ਹੈ ਮਤਲਬ ਮੇਰਾ ਖਿਆਲ ਹੈ ਵੀ ਦੋ ਤਿੰਨ ਸਾਲਾਂ ਦੀ ਮਹਿਮਾਨ ਹੈਗੀ ਆ ਵਾਲੀ ਪਾਰਟਿਕੂਲਰ ਬਿਲਡਿੰਗ ਪਿੰਡ ਹੈਗਾ ਇਹ ਮੰਡਾਲੀ ਨੀਅਰ ਅਲਪਾ ਇਨ ਕਸੂਰ ਡਿਸਟ੍ਰਿਕਟ so do you have any plans or any suggestions for these kind of things okay so this is a very very important question jada tusi hun puchha ya and i'll tell you why jado a few minutes ago mai tanu charena tanu dikhana sila when the charena was recreated remember it's created just like you're doing paint work okay it's exactly the same kind of work so jado we look at jada haveli aap dekhde hain gurudware dekhde hain jire any any area with preservation it's the same thing what we would do in this particular case is we would actually photograph this haveli okay this uh, sorry this uh, tomb kind of structure we would then painstakingly recreate it like and as a digital painting okay as a digital painting once the digital painting has been recreated or the micho up a 3d model banasa there that hap- that, that does two things ek hega 3d model ban janda hai ਫਿਰ ਜੇ ਕੈ ਕੋਈ ਥਰ ਇਨਵੈਸਟਮੈਂਟ ਹੈਗੀ ਆ ਦੈਟ ਕੈਨ ਰੀ ਯੂ نو ਰੀਕ੍ਰੀਏਟ ਥੈਟ ਬਿਲਡਿੰਗ ਦੇ ਕੈਨ ਯੂਜ਼ ਦਾ 3D ਮਾਡਲ ਐਸ ਦਾ ਬੇਸਿਸ ਆਫ ਪ੍ਰਿਜ਼ਰਵਿੰਗ ਦਾ ਬਿਲਡਿੰਗ ਡਸ ਦੈਟ ਮੇਕ ਸੈਂਸ ਸੋ ਯਾ ਓਨਲੀ ਆਲ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਯੂ ਡੂ ਅ 3D ਮਾਡਲ ਬਟ ਦਾ 3D ਮਾਡਲ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਆ ਦਾ 3D ਮਾਡਲ ਕੈਨ ਹੈਲਪ ਕੰਜ਼ਰਵੇਟਰਸ ਇਨ ਦਾ ਲੌਂਗ ਰਨ ਓਵਰ 5 ਐਂਡ 10 ਇਅਰਸ ਐਸ ਟੂ ਹਾਊ ਦੇ ਸ਼ੁਡ ਰੀਕ੍ਰੀਏਟ ਦਾ ਬਿਲਡਿੰਗ ਸੋ ਦਾ ਮਾਡਲਿੰਗ of any building is very very important you can do that of any structure i mean i was thinking that that sada um um akali phula singh da jitta fort jitta hai ga oh pa one of those areas i would love to go there and actually recreate the fort jitta it's a smart hai ga akali phula singh da that would be very very important for me personally because i thought that'd be very very important but going back to your question yes we do have the technology to recreate the frescoes because it does involve the painstakingly recreating just like artwork then from that a 3d model can be made but let me just go one further as well so one type of technology up on gal jadani ki thi is about um, 3d printing as well so i'm not sure if anyone can see this um i'll show this here in our um, exhibition of the anglo sikh wars we actually recreated objects in terms of 3d printing as well so apa bachana apa we got them to actually print out uh, objects So this is just a basic uh, 3D print but what you can do is jado apa ek way structure bhi banate ab objects bhi banate then we can 3D print them as well and again that creates interest and also museums can then actually have them in their locations as well so another ji yeah, yeah. sirf 2 minute rehnde so my question is jiddan hun mere kol aa oh jehdi main tonu tasveer dikha ke hatya the picture i just showed you is inside okay. this building you can see it dar to ke hoye hai and i have this picture okay. and i have this picture and i have this picture of the same building so when yeah. you create a 3d model can yeah. you help me to create idda idda a bhi baron dikh jauga matlab jada hun as well mai scene dekh rahe ha ki bar palm tree at or it will be just this picture or can you start from jado 3d da mera matlab hai ki what kind of things you need for i just want to do one building with you just let's say this one building i will take oh. care of it jo bhi apna kharcha kurcha matlab that is let's just start with one this one are the pictures enough or you need more technology with the 3d camera leke jaiye or okay. just the photography is enough okay on a low end low end we can do it from photography okay it's not going to be 
But also, once the 3D model is made, yes, we can recreate them for you as well afterwards. So it's, this can be recreated. That can be made as if it was exactly like it was built yesterday, essentially. And the and the areas which it did that smudged out, defaced, weathered, that can also be recreated as well. So the answer to your question is yes, yes, yes. All right. Thank you so much. So my last question is, uh, what else do you have in mind that you would like to reach out before I take, I'm going to answer, ask you two questions from people. What else you need from the public to help you in these initiatives? Do you have something planned after August? So what, what kind of support do you need from people? I think they should get in contact with us. Try and, I mean, monetary help is just one aspect. Okay, Monetary help is really, really important. Funding the Sanu Kafi did not both Lona. We only get minimal amounts of funding. The rest of it is a lot of good work and goodwill on people like Taranjit from Taran 3D. Okay, but it's not sustainable. So long term, we do need more funding for projects like this. But at the same time, we need people to share the objects that we have as well. So Sadab Museum.com website Jirahaya. Salah, we were asking everybody to go to the uh, website, share the objects as well. You can even embed them onto your own website as well. They're freely shareable objects. So the Tadiko website has to embed custody onto your own website as well. So this is the level what we're telling people to actually share the work so then most people around the world can have access to it as well. Mansa, many already friends are joining me from that village, Chaudhary Faisal Mayoji. And uh, so we will be sending 3D camera people there as you will instruct within next week. We will try to shoot that according to your specs. Just we will try with that one building that we just show and we will go by your specs. You don't need to go there. We will send the people on your behalf to that village Madali and we'll try to recreate just that one building for our uh, viewers here and then we'll go to the next level. And uh, there was one question regarding uh, your book. The question was from Hardeep Singh Ji. Ki, it is reported somewhere that a British doctor attended to Guru Gobind Singh Ji wound at Nanded Hazur Sahib sent by British Emperor Bahadur Shah. So this is going to be our last question for today. Do you have any comments on that? It's actually in the book. That's the first chapter. I didn't actually allude to it, but you're going to have to buy the book to find out what the... What of the course. So very great question. It's in the book and I give you my reasoning as to what I think happened. Okay. So... Oh, that's amazing. So you have included that, that fact in there. All right. So... Yes. So that concludes our talk show for today. It was really great. We went a little bit over the time, but I think it was worth it. And uh, just to... Summarize everyone, if you want to purchase this particular book, that's how we started our talk show today. It's uh, the British and the six. Please visit helion.co.uk. Helion.co.uk. That was one topic today. And the second was the Anglo Sikh Museum. To visit Anglo Sikh Museum, I posted the link in the comment section. You can visit www.anglosikhmuseum.com. Uh, uh, Thank you so much, Narsab. And uh, there is my friend from Leicester. He's asking, uh, he's ready for some volunteer work. If you have any, uh, you know, need I'm anything, his name is Harinder Singh. He's a wonderful helper. You know, when I was a little bit of a child, I would like to tell you a little bit about it. I mean, I used to do parts of the role, I used to do parts of the role, I used to do parts of the role. So, hey, Harinder Singh ji, he was the senior in that group. I was a little bit. So that's how we connect. Now I have changed into history in a different, uh, so it's all good. No, I can definitely connect. I can contact each other, share what you can do. So, and in fact, it's an invitation to everybody around the world because I did a project from the, this is not for one person. It is not for an organization. We have to protect it for our coming generation. Because if we don't do it, we have to make sure we do the hard work now so the protection of history and heritage for our ongoing generations. Ji, Mansab, Jan Kapala, would you like to say anything to our audience? We're going to close in one minute. I think, so, up and coming scholars and researchers are, we always be a field scholar, always go to the field. Um, Second thing is we now have capacity digital technology use to catch up with the rest of the world in terms of what our Sikh 
Guam is about, what ITIAS is about, and we need to work on these digital technologies for the future as well. So to ensure that, um, you know, that we are preserving and protecting things because any time Sunday, just it Hamala was about, but we need to make sure we're in a position that if ever that happens, we're in a position that we've already digitized a lot of the information through technologies and we can recreate things as well. So email Akasha, that's the object of what we're trying to do. And I just want to say a special thank you to uh, Tanjit Singh, who's been doing a lot of hard work on the project, together with Qatar Singh as well, and Rajman from Leicester as well. So I want to say the da, a special thank for them to actually helping out with this project, which has been ongoing for several years as well. So did not the viewers know my kind of why would you go call some why would you for the thank and and you know let's get let's get connected as soon as possible. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, it was really great to join you all. And if anybody has any questions, you can reach uh, Dr. Uh, Gurinder Singh Man. You can visit the website helion.co.uk to purchase his book, The uh, British and the Six. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.